Well, <clears throat> funny story. A couple of days ago, I decided, you know, I, I think I want to be a Christian again. But there was, you know, there was mainly one thing stopping me. And that was the whole ask Jesus into my heart. And, and I was like, you know, that sounds painful. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, I th I'm a thinker. I thought, okay, you know, you got, okay, let's see, atriums and, and ventricles and aortas. And, and I just, I, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. Um, I mean, Okay, so let's assume that I ask him into my heart. I mean, what's he going to do? Hang on to an artery, you know, like that all day long? Every day, boosh, boosh, boosh. And he's like, you know, I mean, how can you get anything done like that? I mean, he's got a lot of work to do. I mean, he's sitting there hanging on for dear life. How's he going to make me stronger and give me more faith? It would never work. Then I figured it. I was like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'll ask him into my rectum. I mean, you know, it's a little more cramped, but you don't have to be holding on for dear life all day. I mean, just maybe once a day. And then I thought, no, that's not going to work either. I mean, I mean, that's not going to work. And then I thought, that's not a very, I mean, it's kind of cramped. And no, 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 that's not going to work. So then I thought, what other organ could I ask? I mean, can't be the pancreas, could it? I mean, that doesn't sound right. Then I, then I, it came to me. It came to me just poof like a light going off. My stomach, it's way bigger, much more room. And it's, you know, it's not, not only is there more room, but you don't have to deal with something all the time, just a couple of times a day. And I could get him a little umbrella, umbrella like that, and, and he'd be cool. And, and then it came to me, not going to work. What about the stomach acid? I mean, a couple of days he'd be all shriveled up with his flesh, you know, sloughing off. And no, no, no. That would be bad. That would be bad. So, I mean, I pondered it, and I pondered it, and I thought, and I cogitated, and... And nothing made sense. What, I mean, where in the body? The mouth? No, that's not going to make any sense. Hi, you meet people on the street. Hi, how you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I've got Jesus in my mouth. No, that's not going to work. I thought maybe the ear canal. But I, 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 you know, you might be a little too large for that. Then another thought came to me. I, I must just be brilliant. I'll ask Jesus. He knows everything. Should have thought of that before. But I didn't get down on my knees or anything because I don't, I mean, I'm not into numerology and magic ways of doing, you know. I was, I just asked it right up into the air. <clears throat> and I asked Jesus, I said, Jesus, you know, I'm thinking about becoming a Christian again, but I, I don't know where to ask you into because none of that makes sense to me. And, I, and uh, can you just tell me? You know, how, this is a problem. It's, a, it's, it's precluding me from being a Christian. It's a roadblock. It's a, a showstopper, if you will. And you know what? He answered me. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't believe it at first, but he said, you don't have to ask me into your body. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. You could just ask me into your house. I was like, Really? That I mean, that easy? Just into my house? He was like, yeah. I was like, wow. That, I mean, I could be a Christian again. So, so that night, that, that very night, I prayed and asked Jesus into my house. You know what? Right there on the bed, he appeared. I was, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was, my eyes got big and I was, I, my smile was huge. He was there. Little Jesus, about that tall. And uh, I reached down and, and put my hand down there, and he got on it, and it was like, this is just too weird. So Jesus in my house, and I'm thinking, man, I'm set now. I'm going to heaven, and I've got Jesus in my house. 
I mean, all these other Christians have Jesus in their heart. That's got to be. I mean, that's not working. How, you know, just like Dr. Phil, how's that working for you? And I asked Jesus about it. They said, you're, you know, you're right because all these Christians and, you know, so many denominations, it's because he's in their heart. He doesn't have time to build their faith. And I was like, I figured it out. Well, with the help of Jesus. But then, you know how things start off good? And, they, and then they kind of go downhill from there? Well, I mean, you know, it, it, it started off innocuous enough, I guess. But, I, you know, when I get depressed, I want to talk to Jesus. So I go in the bedroom. He's not there. He's not on the bed. He's not on the floor. So I have to end up calling him like... <laughs> Like a pet, like a dog or cat, I'm, I'm walking down the hall, Jesus! And then I cock my ear, no reply. Sometimes I find him and sometimes I don't. And, and one time he was, uh, he was in the kitchen. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal. But I go in there and flip the light on all over the floor, Captain Crunch. And I'm like... And there he is, in his little white robe, in his little sandals. He's just eating them. And I'm like, I mean, how come on the floor? I mean, everywhere. It's like he's messy. And I, I was thinking, why Captain Crunch? Of all the things in my kitchen, and I, I figured maybe it was the boat, you know. The, the, he sailed around in, on the Sea of Galilee so much. Maybe it was the boat reference. It just kind of clicked in his head. I don't know. Or maybe they just taste so crunchy and sweet. But, uh, and then I was concerned. I mean, I'm like, okay, he's only two inches tall. Dude, you've eaten half the box. He said, I, I, I told him, I said, Jesus, you're, you're going to get sick. He said, don't worry, I can heal myself. And I was just, oh, I turned the light off and went back and I, I just couldn't talk to him. That was it. I was like, that, you know, and days go by. I mean, and I say, okay, okay, I'll put up with it. You know, for, for eternal life, I'll put up with it. But then he starts to soil the carpet. And I'm questioning, man, I'm really questioning. And it's, it's just one thing after another. And then final thing set me off. I got home one day. And I go in the bedroom. I'm looking for him. Jesus, Jesus. I look down on the floor. He's got all my porn mags. And he's got him out in like a little circle around himself with pictures like propped up on the bed. And like it's a, a temple of porn. And he's right there in the middle. And I can't, I can't, well, I can't tell you what he was doing. Well, yes, I can. Okay. He was wanking. All right. I was... I mean, it just, it was like getting slapped. I thought, what, Jesus, and I, I, I looked at him and I said, what are you doing? And he looked up at me. You know what he said? He said, I'm coming quickly. That was it. I said, out, out of my house. I picked him up by his little robe. His feet were dangling. I can't tell you what he was saying. But I threw him out on the doorstep and I said, start walking. I'm not a Christian anymore. I slammed the door and that was it. That was it. That was the last I, I heard of him. So, don't say I didn't try. And, uh, I guess, uh, you know, if you're going to ask Jesus into your home, just count the cost, baby. Count the cost.